Good evening. Tonight I have item 61593, Syntec 11 function, digital multimeter. Does a lot of stuff. And I never thought I would buy one of these from Harbor Freight since they have the free ones. And that usually covers what I need other than what I use my Fluke for. But I went and got this because this has one function the Fluke does not. So let's open it up and talk about that one function. And using 10 snips of scissors again. Okay, I got this for $17. Um, it comes with the ever-present manual. And there's two part numbers with this. Let's put a battery in it. Harbor Freight does something I find irritating. They put a screw on this door. I think a friction fit door would be so much better. You got that red thing over it. It's not like it's gonna come loose. And they don't even put a retainer clip to keep the screw in. But it uses 9 volt, and I'm going to use the 9 volt that came with it. Even though I know it doesn't have as long a life, it still has a life. Okay, so plug in the 9 volt. Let's make sure it comes on before we put the cover on. Huh, it comes right on. Let's put the cover back in and the screw back on. And I find the screw irritating, but not irritating enough to leave it out and cause problems in the future. So. Okay, 11 function digital multimeter with audible continuity testing. Okay, so the one function that this has that my Fluke doesn't have is temperature. And you plug a probe in right here. Now this manual says you need a type K temperature probe. I think they call them thermocouplers. They even give you one that I don't like, but it'll serve its purpose. So this is the probe. And this is the connector that it has. It's two flat blades. Okay, the temperature sensor part of this is that little tip, maybe a little bit over an eighth of an inch. So if you get the rest of this close to a heat source, it's probably gonna run the casing or the probe. Uh, I have ordered one that has a 36 inch equivalent of this eighth inch. So it'll let you get into hotter places without damaging this binding. But this will work to get it working. So I'm just gonna plug this in. So let's turn it to temperature. And this is in Celsius. So it took it a second to stabilize. 26, 25, that would be the ambient temperature. Okay, so I did the unboxing, the initial setup here because it's so cold outside, below freezing. It actually has a nice set of probes. Good morning. Frigid day in the shop today. Did get above freezing at 33 degrees today. I've been using this new multimeter to test electronics and that piece of it works good. The ohms, the volts, Frequency is designed to measure AC and DC voltage frequency, not RF frequency. It doesn't work in that manner. So this is the probe that came with it. So I got my propane torch that I also got from Harbor Freight. I have a video on this, reviewing the torch itself, and then a method to adapt it to 20 pound tanks instead of these bottles. So let's get this fired up. If you remember, one of the things I don't like about this is it has such a small probe. Not really meant to put in fire. Heat. And there's the problem I have with it. It's a contact only, not a flame. So let's pull out that one. Put in this one. Longer. This thing cost me about 10 bucks on uh, Amazon. So let's put that in the flame and see how fast it heats up. 
Wow. I have a feeling this is meant more as a ambient temperature inside of the kiln. Okay, this thing's supposed to go up to 1800, both of these. As you can see, it seems to work better. This one, the casing caught on fire. This is not meant to be an open flame. What I bought this for is a temperature probe for a forge. And we're going to build a forge here in a little bit using angle iron and fire brick. But it's going to use uh, Harbor Freight cutoff saw to cut off the metal. I have no reference point for this. I, I can't measure the temperature of this flame with a different probe to see if there's any differences between the two. So I've got to take this as a relative temperature. Once I put it in the kiln, I, I know about the temperature. It's not going to be extremely accurate, but it's going to be very, very close. So as you can see, it's still cooling off. Okay, so to me, the one that comes with it isn't very useful for me. If you have contact with a surface that isn't burning, I think this is going to be fine, but I do not think it's meant for something like a forge. What I've been doing is mounting it to the back of this. This one I'm going to put in storage and only keep this one with it. This is meant for your probes, but I quite literally do not like storing them that way. So there we go. Okay, I've already scratched up the screen a little. I'm not even sure how I did that. I cannot test how accurate it is, but even if anything on here is off 10 to 15%, I don't think that's that bad. I think the 10 or 15% error rate is well within the variety of what you're measuring's accuracy also. 180 degrees off on a temperature, might be relevant if I'm using it to gauge when to quench steel. But I can use it, figure out if it's high or low based on the results that I get, and I'm okay with that. I think this is a very useful tool. It was kind of expensive for Harbor Freight, considering they give away the free ones. Uh, this one cost $18 with a 20% off coupon, but it does more. It does the temperature. That's what I need. The Hertz I thought I could use, but when I got to researching it, it's only for house voltage. It's not for true RF. And I actually experimented with it, and it won't measure anything in the megahertz range. Now, the capacitance range, actually, to, to go 2 in to 20 micro, that's actually in a usable range for electronics. But in reality, I have a capacitance tester that I won't be using this. So whether it's there or not is irrelevant to me. I need it for voltage, resistance, and temperature. Okay, so I think this is a valuable tool. $18 is really good. When I got looking at other tools that had the temperature range, I was in the $75 to $100 range. So for me, I'll take this one. $18 is much, much better. To me, the biggest limitation of this is you have to select the ranges. So if I'm measuring resistance and I set it on 20K, and I put a 100K resistor to test, it just says one, it doesn't even try to test it. So I've got to adjust the range. The good thing though, is they give you the range on there. You're at the 200K, you're at the two meg, you're at the 20 meg. So it tells you where you're at. And that's actually kind of good because this dial to me, sometimes I get it on the wrong thing and intentionally, specifically temperature. So it tells me temperature, tells me 200 volts, 200 volts so it's not auto ranging and for someone that normally uses a fluke like me the non auto ranging quite a bit of a pain in the ass because if I don't get a reading I don't know if the part is bad or I've just got the range wrong so I kind of got to play around with it I found that very annoying doesn't make it less usable just annoying the second most irritating thing is the on off button. When you turn it on, it has like an absolute timer to turn off. It, it's not time from the last time you measured something, it's time from the time you turned it on. So I'll actually be in the middle of measuring something and it'll power off. So find that quite irritating. So if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.